What's going on, Brews? Basic Chat Investor Bro video coming at you. Today's topic, Scarlet and Violet Illustration Rares. Yeah. So my last video was all about how great of a time it is. My last video was about how great of a time it is to be in the Pokemon TCG hobby and to be a Pokemon card collector in general. Whether you're talking about buying or selling, there's so much liquidity, so much price action, so many different cards going up, down, left, right, but mainly up uh, in the last few weeks that it is just easy to get stuff done. It is easy to accomplish your Pokemon card goals right now. It is easy to make trades and flips and get good value for what you got and then maybe find some sleeper deals on some other stuff that isn't getting pumped right now, you know what I'm saying? Um, it is all in all just a very fun, well-balanced time to be a Pokemon TCG card collector. And today we are going to talk about the illustration rares of the Scarlet and Violet era. A handful of them that have gone a little wacky, gone a little wee to the moon. Not really, but almost. Um, yeah, and then a couple other things. But yeah, no, no mimic brew, no crazy intro. This is a standard, safe investor bro video for your pleasure. All right, let's do it. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm just saying that now because I always forget. Please like, comment, subscribe, guys. I love you. I love you guys so much. All right. Oh, disclaimer. Anything I say regarding prices where I'm like guys you need to hop on this card now before it explodes because I don't want to see you guys miss out I don't want a Magikarp scenario, okay? Me personally, I have a very serious issue with Magikarp. I waited way too long <laughs> And I was like, <laughs> it's twice as much. Okay, so anytime I say guys this is about to explode I'm saying it with conviction and because I don't want you to have your own Magikarp scenario Hence why I've said like 40 times over the last month get your Steelix now Okay, and I tried, I tried to help you guys with Groudon. I tried, I tried, I said, get your Groudon for, for 30 bucks, man. Get it for 30. Okay, and now it's like, what? It's like freaking almost 60. All right, let's, let's, give me a sec. TCG player, here we go. All right, so right off the bat, I just wanted to let it be known that little baby bastard Pikachu is finally cooling off, okay? This is literally the last card I need for my Palais and Fates Master Set, and I've ran into a handful of them over the last couple months, and over the last couple months, it has literally just been sitting at like 45, 40 to $45 forever, and I check this price literally every single day, because I'm looking for a good one, a perfect one, I mean, and I've been scared shitless that it was gonna crack 50 and take off, and thankfully for all of us, it is finally sub, sub 40, it is actually finally going down, and it is around 36 bucks, 37 bucks. So for those of you that need little baby bastard Pikachu, uh, he is, she, he is finally down to a reasonable 30 something dollars. And to be honest, I don't know if it'll last for long. I could see this bouncing right back up to 40, 45, 50. The point is the last card I need, thankfully, because I waited, it has finally cooled off and I'm about to cop this little baby bastard here in a minute. But yeah, so I just want to let you guys know Baby Shiny Pikachu is finally slightly more affordable for the first time since it was 30 bucks forever when it came out. Because yeah, it was 45 forever. Alright, so here, here's illustration rares. So Eevee, do not buy this Eevee, okay? This Eevee right now is trending at around 50 bucks or $47. And this is eerily similar to a very similar card from the previous set, which we're going to go over in a sec. So do not buy this Eevee. Why are you not going to buy this Eevee? This is the most obvious, like, this is like swarms to a fly. Pumper to see this Eevee illustration rare in a set that a lot of people aren't too excited about. And they're like, oh, let's all pump this, okay? So that, that happened with Ghastly. So let's look at Ghastly, Temporal Forces. Okay, Ghastly. Look at that. And then look. Okay? So this, this what you see here with Ghastly from Temporal. This is Pikachu, or Eevee, pardon me. This is this is what Eevee's chart is going to look like literally a week from now. We got a day by day and then a week from now, it's... I see this card, and, and I'm not saying it might not be a $40 or $50 card six months, a year from now, whatever. But what I just naturally see occurring for obvious reasons, uh, meaning the set just came out, a bunch of these are going to get open and listed, and yada, yada, yada. It is absolutely going to turn into this chart. And so, yeah, I think this EV is this set's Gasly. I think it's a $20 IR for sure. It might be 22, it might even be 25, because, I mean, the rest of the set really isn't that strong, let's be honest. But do not pay 46, 50, 60, 
whatever wait a week literally maybe not even a week maybe wait till tomorrow maybe by the time this video uploads probably not but i'm just saying this is this sets ghastly it'll go down get it for 20 bucks in a week or two and then yeah six months from now a year from now yeah it, it has a chance like all these other very popular ones we're about to talk about just not now don't bite the bullet and pay for this now wait a couple days all right so yeah there you go those two and side note look at this unfair stamp the premier a spec trainer card from the new set twilight masquerade just a few days ago pre pre-release was easily going for fifty dollars okay and people were buying it at fifty dollars look at it now nine dollars and fifty cents okay this is why you don't buy things pre-sale okay especially these speculative maybe playable maybe not playable a spec cards highly highly volatile in the pokemon tcg player community has a bigger influence on the market price of cards bigger than ever okay so this was 50 bucks and now it's not even 10 bucks just saying that is an impressive and fast fall okay all right now let's get into the crazy crazy illustration rares this one i gosh i tried so hard I literally made a video, what, a month ago? A month and a half ago? I was like, please, just guys, if you want this card, get it for 30. There are reasons. It is obvious to me what is happening. It's on the heels of Magikarp going up. It has been a very beautiful looking line chart since the day it came out. We have your pre-market pump. We have your stability. And then we have, holy moly, okay? And again, it was around here that I saw it break past there. And I was like, oh god, I gotta get my Groot on now, and I gotta tell you guys to get your Groot on now too. And I tried, and here we go. So now Groot on's. It, I mean, it's beyond. It's now the most. Look at look at this. It, it. I think it passed. It literally passed. Oh wait. Oh, they're so close. Okay, yesterday, for a minute, Groot on actually passed Roaring Moon. Looks like Roaring Moon is back up. But yeah, an illustration rare. At least yesterday, when I last looked at it, was the most expensive card from Paradox Rift. And the fact that that's even possible is simply related to the set size. Both Paldea Evolved and Paradox Rift are absolutely massive. And there's a very large, I think, 34 IRs in Paradox and 36 in Paldea. The point is, so any one of them, like this Grudon or that Mag Magikarp, can be exceptionally difficult to pull on their own, even though the rarity tier itself is 1 in 11 or 1 in 12 packs because there's so many it makes these cards exceptionally difficult to pull aka obtain and that's why you have this as even a possibility of being 56 or in Magikarp's case 100. Now again every time I bring up Steelix or Grudon I also bring up Steelix because honestly like look I used to trade stocks I used to be a day trader I had an offshore brokerage account I've done swing trading I've done short-term investing this chart, this price chart, if you're in the stock market, this is literally just the most beautiful, natural, healthy growth price chart. I've, it, it, it's just, yeah. So again, I tried to tell you guys, get Steelix for 10 or 11 bucks, about a month and a half ago is when I started talking about it. Now it's, it hasn't taken off. It is very, very healthily just pew, 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 pew. So you still have time. Definitely get your Steelix for under $15. Don't say I didn't warn you when, you know, it's 30 bucks in a month or two, okay? Ninetales. We brought up Ninetales. The raw price, I, I brought up Ninetales because of the PSA 10. So, very, very cheap, beautiful card from a very shamefully small set that really isn't... Obsidian Flames, not that bad. It's just small. If Obsidian Flames had a couple more SIRs, definitely more IRs, and definitely more, a couple more Hyper Rares. Only three. Why do, why do you only have three Hyper Rares? It's like Palain Fates having three IRs. You just make it way too easy. You make people hate the card. All right, but the PSA 10, I'm just saying, I think it's trending upwards to $100. So for an ungraded card, you know, eight, nine bucks. And then uh, the 15 to grade, you're talking less than $25 invested for a, a potential $100 flip. Um, Cause yeah, there's a hundred dollar. It's trending between 70 and 100, but I'm seeing a lot of sales very close hitting the 100 mark quite a bit so obsidian flames nothing's worth too much but the psa 10 of nine tails is starting to head in the right direction all right now let's look at magikarp so magikarp 
This is one of the most impressive buyouts I have ever seen. This was absolutely a buyout. Even TCG Player themselves released an article confirming that this was a buyout. And even they themselves were impressed at how well it held. So there was around this time, there was a very limited amount of Illustration Rare Magic Carps. They were all bought out, hence buyout, and went up. And because of how rare this card is, rather than the market flooding this card with more copies available, they're just simply aren't that many copies available which is why it ended up hanging at the hundred dollar mark and it has stayed and you know it might go down to 70 or 80 and in fact i think it would look a lot more healthy and preferable and make a little more sense maybe if it did go down but the psa 10 on this card is somewhere between four and five hundred dollars and i think more and more people are starting to realize that that oh my gosh this ultra modern illustration rare can fetch Infin like infinite amounts more than so many equal rarity sword and shield cards um, Yeah, so Magikarp PSA 10 is monstrous and Magikarp raw price is very healthily staying at a hundred I hate the fact that I never bought this card when it was like 60. How long was this card? 65 bucks? 60 bucks? Oh my god, 40 <laughs> It was 44 It was 44 dollars <laughs> it was forty-four dollars. Oh god. Oh god, that literally hurts my stomach. That hurts my life. Oh god, but yeah. So this buyout right here was very successful. All right, now. Oh god, I can't believe that. <laughs> it was forty-four dollars. Uh, uh, Tyranitar, forty bucks. Tyranitar two a month ago, twenty bucks. I got my Tyranitar around, I got my Tyranitar for $18 at a card show, I think right around the, when was it? April 27th? I have a banner for the card show I went to above my head. So I got mine for about $18 at a card show on April 27th. So I got it five, oh, right here. I got it for five bucks off and ever since I bought it. And I did reference it in a video and I told you guys, get the Tyranitar. But then yeah, so now we're double that already and it's been like a month, holy crap, Titar. I mean, let's be honest, look at that artwork, look at the Garuda on artwork. These cards are from sets that have a lot of IRs, they are indeed very difficult to pull, and the good IR of the popular Pokemon is being rewarded with a huge market value raw price, same with Raichu. So Raichu for a while was way ahead of Tyranitar, uh, this happened first with Raichu, but then now I think Tyranitar is actually just, you know, a dollar more, so Tyranitar has retaken its place above Raichu as the uh, the most expensive IR. But for the longest time, when the set first came out, it was Tyranitar, and then Raichu passed it up for the longest time. Now Tyranitar is kind of right in the middle of getting bought out and pumped and blah blah blah. So yeah, but they're both almost $40 cards, so yeah. It, oh, I will say this. There is half as many, so if you go down here to available, this is bullshit. I click English. TCG player, why do you do this? What, you guys need to have your own separate tab for Japanese, okay? The amount of Japanese cards, even when you preference English, that get thrown in there that affect the price is so annoying. TCG player, make a separate Pokemon tab that says Pokemon Japanese, please. There's way more than a big enough market to warrant making its own separate tab and getting all those Japanese prices out of there. Grr! Okay, but there's only like 25 copies available of Tyranitar. Um, at around that price, whereas with Raichu, there's like twice as many, there's like 45 or something. So there's actual less copies of Tyranitar, which is why I think it just passed up Raichu. Alright, so that kind of covers all the IRs. Uh, and then just two random things I want to leave you guys with, because I don't think, well, if you've been under a rock for the last week or two, you know, you may, may not know that Crown Zenith is absolutely popping off. Thank God I finished Master Setting Crown Zenith when I did. Oh my god. So yeah, Crown Zenith, the gold cards, um, they're basically, Crown Zenith is a set that when it came out, you could literally open, rip open tons of packs and literally make money off of it, just off selling your hits. Um, within a couple weeks of it coming out, that, that not became the case, but now we're almost, I think we're even at that point where it's just like Crown Zenith just came out, like yesterday, because honestly, with the prices of packs and sealed products, with so many chase cards that are just $100, $100, $65, $65, $60, 
Leafeon's doubled in value. Glaceon's doubled in value. Suicune, like these are almost all these top cards have almost doubled in value just in the last two weeks, literally. Like Darkrai, 20 bucks now. Raikou, these were all 10, 12 dollar cards for a very long time over the last few months. So yeah, this is insane. Like Crown Zenith is the most beautiful set you will ever see master set it in a binder flipping the pages. And, but the pull rates are good and the price on sealed products is really fair. So this might be a scenario where like right now is one of the few times in like Pokemon card history where you have an extremely fair balance of like <clears throat> hit, you know, market value to how much it costs to rip open the sealed product. So t to be honest, I'm even considered just buying up whatever cheaper Crown Zenith products I can get. Because, man, I mean, I have all of it, and but I want as much Crown Zenith as I could possibly get. It's just a really beautiful set. And then randomly, I just noticed this while I was doing some research. Uh, Sword and Shield Base, if you don't know, it's all about Snorlax and Marnie. So one, uh, the VMAX, regular VMAX Snorlax has recently shot up to almost $18. Yeah, look at that. So yeah, it was just like, what, beginning of this month, it was a $10 card for the longest time. Uh, now it's, it just shot up to 18 bucks. I have this card and waiting to grade it, and I guarantee you I'm gonna get the gym and 10 on it. The card is flawless. Um, but yeah, it's just such an obvious VMAX card that stands out above others. I think a similar thing for the Machamp from Astral Radiance. It's very vis a lot of colors, very visually stunning regular VMAX card. But yeah, so that's and then Marnie for you for the waifu and furry boys. Um, this is one of those scenarios where like waifus aren't really hot right now. It's Sword and Shield Alt Art, so it's a good time to buy based on just buying what's not being hyped. Marnie Sword and Shield Base, she's uh, she went all the way down to 35. Was she at 38? I'm just saying, if you look at the all times, it is a fantastic. Like look at that. A, July of last year was 80 bucks, and you can get Marnie Full Art from Sword and Shield Base, one of the only actual cool cards from Sword and Shield Base, for half of that, for 38 dollars. So I just wanted to make sure you guys knew that if you're interested in Marnie. And then on top of that, her secret rare version is one of the best values I think I've ever seen for just a Pokemon card in general. Like, what is it, 12, 13 bucks for a secret rare Marnie full art? Yeah, look at that. I mean, 22 to... I would buy both these Marnies right now just based on getting a great deal at a great time. Uh, yeah. But all right, um, yeah, so guys, guys, that's all I got for this video. Go ahead and please like, please comment, please subscribe. And again, try to buy these cards if you are going to buy them anywhere except for TCG Player. I may end up making a video on how and why TCG Player has an ex exceptionally unusual influence over the Pokemon card uh, price market, even though they don't necessarily have the most quantities available, but they do have the most eyes on their website. And so they do have a massive influx of influence versus cards available so again anytime i tell you get a card just please just go anywhere other than tcg player and yeah that's all i got like comment subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next one deuces